All right, guys. So today we're going to learn about how to draw a mouth, um, a realistic mouth. And then if we have time, we'll, we'll try to draw a realistic eye too. So we'll do um, the mouth and the eye. So I'm just going to kind of figure out where on my camera I can draw for you guys. So how to draw a mouth. I'm going to kind of fit it inside of that box so I know where I'm drawing. Okay. Um, so drawing a mouth can be a little bit tricky depending on what you decide to do. Um, like any other facial feature that we work on this week, the most important thing to remember is that it, these are guidelines and that every person's going to be a little bit different. Okay. So um, the most important thing that you can do is when you're drawing a person is take a look at somebody or look at your model or whoever it is you decide to draw and actually examine how does the light hit their face? How do, how do you see the shadow and the contours and how is the structure made? But generally, um, people's mouths are built about the same way. Some people have thicker lips and thinner lips. Um, some people have different teeth, but in general, the mouths are structured the same way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just draw a general mouth. We'll start with the mouth closed and um, I'll explain why, I guess. Um, drawing teeth can be really, really challenging. And I'll probably do a, a mouth with a set of teeth as well, just so you can kind of get an idea of how to draw that as well. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and start with a, a closed mouth, okay? So the way to do this is, um, and you guys can follow along on your paper with your pencil. Um, the way to do it, the first thing I do is I, I think about drawing the middle, like the seam in between your lips, um, where, where your mouth opening is, because that's gonna end up being the darkest thing and the most prominent thing when you're drawing somebody. Even when you're drawing a cartoon character, that's like the one line you draw. So usually what I do is I try to take it and I make like a smushed M. So I kind of like curve up and then down and then this way like that. It's like I took an M and flattened it out. Okay. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna re uh, like replicate that line for the top lip. So I usually kind of, I make it real light to start out with. And I'm just gonna kind of replicate that line on top a little. A little bit less of a curve. And then for the bottom lip, again, depending on how thick the person's lips are, I'm going to go ahead and kind of make it like a U that's like opened up and flattened this a little bit as well. I don't like to bring my lines to points in the corners. Um, I like to leave them separated and I'll deal with that a little bit when, when I add value, when I start to add value. So I don't know if you guys remember, but yesterday when we were talking about eyelashes, we talked about how when you draw an eyelash, eyelashes kind of curve out and up or out and down, depending on which like corner you're in. Well, this is going to seem kind of weird, um, but you can do that same technique when you're drawing a mouth because you guys, your, your lips have texture to them. They actually have physical texture, just like your fingerprints or something like that. Um, and the drier somebody's lips are, the more you see that texture, the um, like if somebody's wearing lip gloss or if you have like moist lips, I guess, um, the less you'll see that kind of texture. So right here in the middle, it'll be kind of like straight up and down. But then as you curve away from the middle, I'm just gonna make all these little circular lines that are curved, just like that example. And a lot of people are like, Mr. Donnie, you're like drawing hair on the lips. I don't get it. Well, you just gotta give it a second. I'll show you how that kind of comes together. And the further you get from the center, the wider you're gonna make those curves. And what you're doing is you're creating a sense of volume. Like these lips are actually three dimensional. So you're giving them cross contours. That's what those are. It's kind of showing that they come out at the viewer. Hopefully my camera is not too laggy on the zoom. I don't know. I don't know what the delay is like. Looks okay on my end. Okay. And I just kind of lay that in there as a background. And then what we're gonna do is I would start to add some, some pretty serious value to this midline. It's gonna be real dark because there's no light inside your mouth, obviously, right? Unless you're chewing on a light bulb. 
So I darken that line up and I make it a little bit wider here in the middle. Because your lips naturally like start to, like, even if you've got your mouth closed, like your lips are separated a little bit in the middle usually. And maybe here on the side, I'll draw um, just like a profile on the side so that we can we can understand how the light would hit it. So you know, usually you got a person with their nose, um, and we'll make the light come down. Because remember, when you're when you're thinking about drawing a person, ninety percent of the time, ninety five percent of the time, the light's coming from above the person, right? If you're inside, the lighting is usually on the ceiling. If you're outside to the sun, it's very rare for somebody to be bottom lit. So the light's usually coming down from above. And so when you think about it, a person's lips are usually like that, right? So in the center, they usually do come apart a little bit. And so this top lip, when you think about it, this top lip is gonna be more in shadow. And the bottom lip, especially right here on the front part of it, this part of the lip will usually be really light and then it'll get dark on the bottom, okay? So whenever you're drawing somebody, it's important to remember that generally speaking, the top lip is gonna be darker than the bottom lip, okay? And that comes in handy a lot of times to quickly draw somebody. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some value to this top lip. Let me just kind of keep it light, use the side of my pencil. And so now I'm kind of working in a circular pattern, kind of overlapping that texture that we created. Oh, we lost somebody. All right, and now I'm gonna kind of do the same thing on the bottom lip, but only really on the bottom. You guys have so much energy today. So talkative. If, you, if I'm going too fast or if you guys have any questions or anything like that along the way, please feel free to chime in. And I'm going to add a little bit of value here on the top too, because obviously the mouth, the, the top lip will cast a little bit of a shadow here on the bottom lip. All right, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's think of for a second a little bit about the area around the lips too, okay? Just, the, just in general. Usually you end up with a little bit of a crease, um, laugh lines is what they're called usually, here on the side of your mouth like where the crease comes up to your nose. So I'll, a lot of times I'll kind of think about where those might be. And depending on like how defined somebody's cheek structure is or how old somebody is, you might make those more or less defined. So you gotta think about it. Um, and then there's also this thing that you can't really see on me because I have a mustache. Um, a lot of people actually call it the mustache holder because of that. Um, this is called your philtrum. This little kind of, um, seam right above your lips. I don't know if you guys ever noticed on your face, you have this little divot right here. And what that actually is, your philtrum, when you're, when you're in utero, when you're, when you're being born or being made, right, your body, the way you're, you're formed, like your skin starts growing from the back of your head and it kind of wraps around the front of your face. And that's actually like the seam. It's like the last thing to seal up before you're born. So that's why that's there or one of the reasons it's there. So that's your philtrum. And then there's usually a little bit of a, uh, depending on the person, right? Some people have larger chins and smaller chins, but you should remember that most people's chins, they jut out down here, right? So that's usually like about a lips space below your lips. You know, there's usually a good, a good fingers gap in between there before your chin starts. So I usually take whatever the distance is from here and I just put it there before I think about adding a chin. I'm just gonna add the indentation. Um, and now we can go ahead and start adding some value here. It'll be darker in the corners. And as it gets up to the top, as it comes to the middle, that's going to pick up more light, right? And, um, and maybe this will make more sense when we start drawing our noses too. When you start to see how the nose casts a shadow or drops a shadow in the mouth. I'm going to add a little bit of value where the philtrum is because it's 
probably picking up some shadow. And then underneath the lip, so I'm gonna darken the bottom edge of this lip now, because underneath this lip is gonna cast, the lip itself is gonna cast a shadow down here, right? And all this kind of is shading, like a lot more, there's a lot more shading involved in the lip and the nose than there, than there were for the eye. Um, not that there wasn't shading in the eye, it's just that <clears throat> the eye had a lot of structural lines and things that you could do, whereas the lip is really, it's built by value, right, when you see it. So you kind of got to just look at what you're seeing and add, and slowly kind of add that value. Okay. I always feel like lips and noses, well, especially lips, they look so um, alien when they're not pla placed on a face. So maybe we'll, maybe I'll erase up here and we'll add our nose in a minute up right above it. Um, all right. So now I can go in and really start punching up the value on this lip. Now we're to the point where we're committing, um, we're committing to our lines so we can feel comfortable like adding more value. So I'm going to start in the middle again. I'm kind of increasing the, the darkness there. I'm gonna increase some of the darkness on the bottom of this lip. And just when you up the contrast at the end of a drawing like this, and this is for any drawing, not just a drawing of lips, that's what really makes it like punch and, and like see, seem like an interesting or exciting drawing is when you up that contrast. I'm gonna kind of add a little bit more value here in the corners. Because your lips are really kind of like coming together there. It's gonna be a little darker. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with the tip of my pencil and just kind of I'm going to bring some of that texture back out because I kind of lost some of it as I was shading. So I'm going to bring a little bit of it back. Not a lot, but just a little. One line there got away from me. Okay. So I feel pretty good about that. I think that looks pretty decent. I'm gonna just kind of round this value out in the middle on the bottom a little bit. See, I'm kind of keeping my lines curved with the contour of the lip. So I'll bring some of that texture back on the bottom as well. And then I think the last little bit of thing that you can do, I really wish like the light from my Elmo is kind of making the, um, making this draw, drawing seem a little bit lighter than it is because the graphite on my paper is picking up some of the light from the camera and reflecting it back at you guys. So just know that that's like, especially here in the middle, this is real dark. It's just, you guys are seeing the light from my projector. So maybe if I cover the light up for a second, you kind of get an idea of, of how dark it's gotten, okay? Um, so the last thing I like to do is, just like we did with the corneas yesterday when we were drawing eyes, there is like a reflective quality to the surface of the lips, right? Because of the moisture. So one of the things I like to do, especially on the bottom lip right here in the middle, I like to think about where's the light? Where's the light coming from above? Where's it reflecting on the lip? And I like to use my eraser and just kind of pull some of the value back off. So a lot of times I'll just kind of pick a spot. I'm gonna just kind of give it an eraser mark here to kind of make it feel 
do a little bit on the other end and maybe just a tiny bit on the top. Just a little, little dab. Kind of to show that there's some actual reflection there. Just a little bit more value back on the bottom. And that'll make it feel, feel more natural. Okay. All right, so that's generally how you draw a set of closed lips. Does anybody have any questions about that? No? Just real quick, I'm gonna move my page up a little bit. And um, you guys like my Ghostbusters Christmas sweater? This is a new one. A new Christmas sweater in my collection. My wife is not too pleased that I purchased it. She's like, you don't think having like five dinosaur Christmas sweaters is enough? You have to go buy $30 Ghostbusters sweaters. Um, anyways, how do I draw an open mouth or like, let's think about an open mouth for a second. It's the same principle. So what you do is you're going to go ahead and, and draw that lip, but um, instead of being so flat like the top one was, it's going to come up a little bit more. Right, and then the bottom will come down like this. So if you look, there's our closed lip on the top. The shape of our closed lip is almost identical, like the entirety of both lips is almost identical to this shape here, but this is actually the opening in the middle of the mouth now. So this is like as if we separated the lips. So here's our top lip. And you have to look, some people have like more pursed lips and I don't know, these are all, they can be different based on the person. And then here's the bottom lip, I'm gonna make it pretty big. When you're drawing lips, just like when you're drawing eyes, there's ways to draw things more masculine and more feminine. If you, um, the delineation between like your skin and the top lip is a lot more subtle on guys than it is girls. Um, so like I would really focus on the like the opening of the mouth if you're drawing a guy and not focus so much on the lips like the the value on the lips but if you're drawing a woman um, I would really focus on making you can really add those contours on the top and the bottom and a lot of that has to do with the fact that like girls are usually wearing some form of like lip gloss or or things like that and just like decades and decades of like stereotypical drawings have like created um just cultural sense of like, if you see big eyelashes, that feels more feminine. Or if you see like really full um, lips, those feel more like feminine qualities instead of masculine qualities. So that's just a way to kind of think about your drawing. All right, so when I'm drawing this, if I'm gonna draw my mouth open, you wanna think about the, like you're gonna have to look at the person's teeth, okay? Everybody's teeth are different. Um, you know, maybe you have big rabbit teeth like I do or maybe you've got like tiny little teeth, but I would look at that. And I usually, what I do is instead of drawing the teeth, I draw the space in between the teeth. So like, let me show you what most people do. This is what people do wrong, okay? So they'll usually start and they'll draw a mouth. I'm just gonna make a little mouth here um, with lips or whatever. Make it like a cartoony, like Rolling Stones mouth. And usually what they do is they'll just go in and just go, okay, there's teeth. And they'll add these like chiclets, like re rectangles in there like this. And what happens is the teeth end up looking just goofy as heck because what you're seeing is those lines represent gaps in the teeth there. They, they show the viewer that there's space or absence of, of things there. But teeth aren't like that. Teeth are stacked kind of like on top of one another. There aren't gaps um, in between them. So what I like to do is instead of drawing, so this is wrong, instead of drawing it like that, I like to do this, okay? I like to think about on the gum line, can you see the gums and like where the teeth are? So like I'll draw this part here, like the separation on the gums, right? And then we'll figure out where those teeth go down to. So this person's teeth that I'm drawing right now, we'll just kind of focus on the, your, if your mouth isn't open very wide, you usually only see the upper teeth. You don't usually see the bottom teeth. Like if I'm just kind of like have a normal, normal mouth without like a big smile, even with a big toothy smile, you know, you still only see the uh, upper teeth usually. And they rest really close to the bottom, bottom lip. So what I'm gonna do is focus on that value that comes in between those teeth. 
So what I do is I draw the separation instead of the gaps in between. Sometimes I leave it real subtle. Like sometimes that's all I'll draw. And then I add my value in the corners because obviously your mouth is shut. So if you kind of like just bring some value from the corners, that's a lot of times all you need to do. And then you shade the top and the bottom the same way that we did before. I still feel like I gave this person, like these two teeth here are too big, I feel like. I actually make them a little smaller. And that's like a big thing, like you gotta be willing to go back and, and look at your drawing and say, you know what, I think that this is, this is a little too big, right? People, once they draw things, they too frequently commit to them forever. Instead of like looking at them and saying, I need to change this, or I need to reflect upon this and maybe make it a little different. I'm just bringing these over just a touch. And then we'll actually like, we'll add another set here. Because if you look, your teeth, after they're, after you get your middle teeth, you've got your, I don't know what they are, incisors or whatever, then your canines, and they get smaller as they wrap around, or you see less of them as they wrap around. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of value to these gums, right? And then underneath that, like, unless you're gritting your teeth, they're not usually touching the top teeth and the bottom teeth. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some value underneath these towards the bottom lip. Just real subtly. And I often find it's that value on the bottom, this value that separates the teeth from the bottom lip that makes a set of teeth look natural or look normal. All right, as you can see, I haven't added really any value inside the mouth yet. Sometimes what I'll do is real light, I'll go and add some value in between the teeth. But if you add too much there, you're gonna have that buck tooth syndrome where you like have given gaps in the teeth. So I'm, I'm like real soft when I add value here. And then I do the same thing from the top. I'm gonna to add like real subtle value down on the, onto the tooth. Cause there, if you think about it, there'd be some shadow coming from the top lip down onto the teeth. So a lot of times I'll go in and I'll add some subtle value there as well. If that makes sense. And then I'll darken up the bottom of that lip. And you can kind of use these same tooth rules. That, like if you're drawing somebody with like a, a wide mouth and you want to draw like a, an extreme expression, you can kind of use those same techniques. Um, you've got to look at their face and kind of look at the teeth. But remember that teeth are generally like a, the lighter you make the details, especially at first, the better, because you can always go back and make those details darker later. Um, so always start real light and then, and then highlight the things that you want to highlight. So again, the corners are going to be a little darker. And then the bottom of both lips will be the darkest part. I feel like I'm like drawing at a weird angle. Because like the way, the way I'm like, my projector is my paper's not like square to my table. I like crane my arm. So hopefully you guys are following along and looking pretty good. 
I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of reflection like we talked about before. This bottom lip. A little bit, a little dash of it on the same side on the top. Always make sure your reflection is usually, if you've got it on this side on the bottom, it's usually on that side on the top as well. And that's basically how you draw, um, it's how you draw an, like an open mouth. I think, I think about mouths a lot when I'm picking a subject to draw or like how I want to draw them. Especially if you're like looking for a source in like a magazine or something like that. You know, somebody with a closed mouth is easier to draw than somebody with an open mouth. I'm not saying avoid it. Just know that going in um, that it's going to be a challenge if you've got somebody that you're showing more teeth is going to be a harder drawing. Okay. But it can be a more natural looking drawing and it can, it can pay off better too at the end. So kind of think about that when you're drawing somebody. All right. Why don't we go ahead and um, I'm going to add a nose. Do you guys, do you want me to add the nose to the bottom mouth or the top mouth? doesn't matter to me. Good decision making guys. <laughs> Real effective. All right. Uh, why don't we do this since we've, since we've been working on this person down here, let me go ahead and clear this, clear some space here. And I'm just going to add a nose to this person. We'll talk about, you know, so much time we got. We're doing good on time. Okay, give myself, I'm gonna have to give myself a little bit of a space up here in order to add this nose to this drawing. Okay, let's get rid of that, it'll look weird. Okay, so we're gonna give this person a nose. So in order to do that, I gotta think about where's that philtrum again? Probably here. Okay. I might even start to think about like, what do the edges of the face look like? Okay, like where, Where's my jawline actually starting to come in here? If you look at most people's jaws, if you were to think about it, um, when you're drawing the profile of a face, so let me draw, let me think about it over here. So if you're drawing a face, um, if you were looking at like an actual skull, the reason skulls are kind of shaped like this, right, is your, your, your mandible, your jawbone fits in here, right? So your nose is here and this is your top set of teeth. So right here where your mouth opens up, that is usually where your jawbone like actually starts to cut over. So when you're drawing somebody's face, I find that people always have a hard time of deciding where to make the curve. The curve usually starts like right on the outsides of the mouth. So like usually cheeks come straight down. I'm gonna erase this a little bit more. Love the erasers on a Ticonderoga pencil. I'm gonna keep saying that because now that I'm putting these videos on YouTube for you guys so that you can reference them if you need to, I'm hoping one day somebody from Ticonderoga sees one of my videos and goes, we're sending that guy a thousand pencils. All right, so usually, you know, if you draw the outside edges of a face, you're making a real narrow face, we'll go ahead and give her some cheeks. So if you look at that, usually it's when you get to this point where you're lined up with the mouth, that's when usually, you start to see the, the jaw cut over and you can give somebody a chin. This fictitious person with these really, really big lips now. Make it a little wider. But I think that'll help us to see like how, how a mouth is on a face, is if we think about it in terms of like where it's placed with the whole face. Usually there's about half, like half the width of your mouth on the side. If you're just looking at somebody right from the front view, usually you'll see about that distance is about half the mouth. So it's right, like from here to here, should be from here to actually maybe right around there. And again, that's just a generality. Anytime I talk to you guys about where things are placed on the face, you know, everybody's a little different. Some people have really square jaws. Some people have chins that jut out real big. You know, it just depends. I feel like her chin's a little small. I'm gonna give it a little more volume. And the way I thought about that is I started drawing this contour here on the top of the chin and I realized it had to have space for that mass to exist. So I'll give her a little bit of a bigger chin. Okay. 
All right, so a nose. Let's start drawing a nose. Um, I'm going to draw some some ways that people draw noses on the side. So a lot of people do this. They'll draw like, you know, I'm, I guess these will feel a little cartoony to you guys, but that's like how people do it. A lot of times people will draw that. Well, no, that's not really it. Sometimes people will draw like, they'll just do this. They'll do like two circles. And that's like a little more accurate, um, but you, you usually don't look, that's like if you were looking up somebody's nose, not like directly at it. So that's kind of, that's not right. Um, noses are really kind of more like this. Let me show you. It's really a combination of, let me think, one, two, three, like four lines, all right? So usually the way I draw a nose is when you're looking at somebody, you're gonna see the bottoms, like the profile of their nostrils like this which a lot of times look kind of like tear ducts or teardrops or triangles. It depends on the person. Everyone's are a little bit different. So I usually start by adding these two shapes here and they're usually sitting on either side of the filtrum, right? That can kind of be your, your leading line or the thing that lets you know where to put things. Okay. Well, usually from there, this part of the nose is like a, it connects. So it's like a, almost like a C. So let's do this. I'm going to do like a cartoony version right here just so you can kind of remember. So it's just like you draw one nostril and then the other nostril. Then you connect them with like a curved line down. And depending on the person's shape of their nose, that can change. Like some people have really rounded nose. Some people have really pointy noses. So sometimes that line could be like that's more round. This would be like more somebody with like a pointed nose. It could come down like that. You know what I mean? It just depends on the person. And then you, you just put them in parentheses to make the outside edges. You just put parentheses around them. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that up here. I'm going to add some parentheses. And most of the parentheses will be up above the top because you see a little bit of it on the bottom. That'll be the top. Okay. This two, when you see both mouths, it's, it's a really like, it's like a surrealist image, like this person that has a mouth on there where their eyes should be. I'll cover it up. All right. So that is how you draw the general structure of it. And like anything else, your nose is just, I mean, it's mostly value. So now we just have to start thinking about how can we start adding value and shadow to this? Well, um, on the top, we looked at that nose, right? So if you think about it up here, if you think about the way value ad adds to a nose, this top part of your nose is usually real, real bright. And then the entire underside of your nose here is usually completely in shadow, all right? Um, depending on the way that you're, you're seeing a person, that's usually how it goes. So if we go back to here, we go back to our nose, well, the bottom of this, so I usually kind of start by like the nostrils I'm gonna make darker, just like the inside of the mouth. There's, there's no light source for that. So it's gonna be real dark. Okay. And then the bottom part where they connect is gonna be a little bit darker. And I almost always, when I'm drawing a nose, I think about that the tip of your nose is almost, it's like circular for most people, or even if they're at a pointed nose, it's like a smaller circle. So I really lightly, a lot of times, I'll draw a circle right here on the tip of the nose. Keep it light, because you're gonna erase it. You're not gonna keep it there. But what it does is it helps you to think about value, the way we shaded a sphere in class, right? You're gonna shade a nose a similar way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and add some value to the bottom, like around the nostrils. Because this is the bottom. And then the value will kind of pitch up around the circle, right? Because that circle is like where the nose is in darkness. Because you kind of have like these creases kind of in the corners where your nostrils meet the center of your nose. There's like a little indent there if you feel it. Um, and so you'll sometimes you'll end up with some, some darker values there. So the value kind of climbs up the sides of the nose and that, that crease.
And you usually get a little bit of value here on the sides like as you go up towards the eyes. But this center part of the nose is real bright usually, especially right here. So I'll usually shade it like almost like a cylinder. So in the middle, it'll be the brightest. And then as it goes around the edges, it'll get a little darker. Okay. And then I usually, at this point, I can go in and like, I'm going to erase the top part of that circle because there's not a line there. It's just, you don't see it. It's just, there's the nose. Okay. Hopefully that helped you that little circle. I, I really think it helps me when I'm drawing noses. All right, now before we punch this up and add our contrast, I'm going to think about, okay, how, do the, how does the nose fit on the face? Well, there's those laugh lines we talked about. They usually kind of connect here to the bottom sides of the lips. So you can usually kind of bring that down. And depending on how the person, like this could probably be all the way up here if the person was smiling, but right now it's kind of like a, just an open mouth. So underneath the nose is going to be quite dark. Because your nose is going to cast a shadow. I'm going to switch pencils. I don't have a pencil sharpener at my desk right now. It's across the room and I don't want to leave the Zoom. So I got a couple sharpened pencils ready to go. Keep your pencil sharp, guys. It helps you add value. So now in this corner part where the laugh line meets the nose, that's going to be a little darker. And then as it moves down, it's going to get lighter. And it kind of follows the, the curve of the face. I'm going to bring this nostril out just a little bit more. I feel like it's a little thin. So I'm going to cheat it out a little bit. And now I'm going to start to pick up the value. Really start punching it up. And the ridges on the filtrum here and here where they're highest are usually the lightest. So I usually try not to add very much value there. I'll like kind of like leave them almost like a little reflective. Some more to the lip. And that's generally how we start working on this. I'll start adding some value around the face like around the lips and stuff, just so we can kind of see how it would, it would sit. Um, but that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions on how to draw a nose or a mouth? Obviously, um, it would vary if you were drawing a face in profile the way you draw a nose is completely different and that's more individualized, right? That's like more based on the structure of somebody's face and how their nose sits. Um, when you're shading a face, I usually kind of lay down a, a nice, um, with, with like circular motions, I kind of lay down value everywhere. I'm not trying to, there's all, everyone always has this tendency to like leave skin white and if you look at a face, there's very little lack of value, right? So the only way I'm going to like go and leave white areas is when light is reflecting on things. And I don't want to take too long with this tutorial, so I'm not getting detailed, but I would keep going over this until you can't see my pencil marks, right? You want this to look blended and natural. So the smaller your circles, the smaller your pencil marks, the more natural this will look. 
And if you think about when you're shading somebody's face too, like their cheeks, like usually this will be the highlighted area, like the place where there's the most light. Because as the light comes down on your face, like this is your, up here, this is your cheek here, right? Your cheek would be like this. And so like the way that when light comes down and hits it, this area is pretty bright and then it gets darker as it goes down. So it's that same idea here. So when I'm adding value, when I'm doing laugh lines and stuff, this is kind of darker down here. It's weird, when I first started drawing this, I thought this was gonna be a girl, but now I feel like I've made it a guy. All right, I think that's enough for this tutorial. So um, what I would like for you guys to do, we've only got like, um, we've only got like seven minutes left of class. So what I want you to do is take your drawing, look at it, Decide, like, do you think there's anything you could punch up in terms of contrast or value? Um, and try to get a decent nose and mouth on a piece of paper by the end of class. And then what you can do is you can take a picture and upload it to our Schoology page. Okay. Um, here, I'm going to stop uh, my share. And does anybody have any questions? No? Okay.